Good afternoon, everybody. I think we're going to get the session started here. Uh, thank you for coming. Welcome to our session today on improving your search with uh, Search API and Solar. Uh, big thank you to Nashville for hosting DrupalCon this year. Appreciate it. Uh, just a heads up for everyone that uh, this session is intended to be uh, kind of just to get you going. If you've never set up Search API and Solar before, we'll walk through the process so you kind of know what to expect. Uh, it's meant to kind of be a good starting point so you can have an improved search with Drupal instead of just relying on uh, Drupal's core search. Uh, I'd also like to ask that you hold your questions to the end. I will leave plenty of time to address questions. And uh, we also maybe spin up a little demo site at the end if we need to take a look at anything in depth. Uh, <clears throat> so, so who are we? Uh, I'm Adam Erickson. I'm a senior Drupal engineer with Four Kitchens, also a hockey fanatic. I coach youth hockey uh, from Minnesota. And hey, I'm Jeff Tomlinson. I'm an architect at Four Kitchens. Um, consider myself a generalist uh, and a beer geek. So. I'll buy me a beer after. Uh, we are Four Kitchens. Uh, we build websites and apps that help you publish great content across all devices, platforms, and experiences. Uh, we work mostly with media and publishing and education, nonprofits, uh, anybody with uh, large amounts of data and they need to deliver it to multiple platforms. So, uh, yeah, why are we doing this talk? Um, Quick thing first, though, I'd like to take a survey. Uh, how many have had to set up Drupal search before on a website? Okay, good, quite a few. How many have worked with Search API before? Good number, all right. And uh, what about Solar? Have you set up Solar instances as well? Okay, all right, it's good to know. Well, we're doing this, this because uh, search is important. And for many users, it's the quickest way to find content that they're looking for. Uh, if you have a lot of content, you owe it to your users to provide an effective search. Uh, search can be a tool, should not be a crutch. Obviously, you want to have a good navigation, but obviously, you need some kind of fallback there. Another big reason is uh, most site owners uh, want to improve their site search. They want advanced f features like filtering. They want more control over the relevance of the information that's, that's displayed to the user. Uh, users also expect better results. We can thank Google for that. And obviously, in most cases, we don't have that kind of backing. So this is a good way to get an improved search without a lot of effort. And obviously, you can't get close to Google, but at least you can do a better job of it. So a quick look at some statistics uh, related to search. On average, 59% uh, of visitors will use internal searches on a, on a site. And on average, 50% of people start on a website and go straight for the internal search box. And also on average, 15% would rather use search function overall. So what do we make of this? Uh, you know, only 15% would rather use search, but 50 go straight for the search box. Uh, on average, most people want to navigate having, and they, they have to use the search. So, your navigation architecture is important, of course, but the search is definitely a backbone of the website and how people are going to find your content. So where do we start? <clears throat> it's a very important topic, obviously. Well, what we like to do is get a game plan. Uh, with any major feature, you've got to have some kind of outline and, and know where you're going to go with this. So it's important that you ask questions and do some good requirements gathering. Uh, you want to uh, consider common features. Uh, these common features we're going to show you today. Uh, but the key thing here is don't make it too complex for no reason at all. Some of these common features might not even be worth having in your search. Uh, you also want to consider your users, what kind of users you have. Are they just looking for general information? Is there specific information they're looking for? Are they looking for media? Uh, are they shoppers for e-commerce experience? There's, there's, there's many, many things, obviously, users come to a site and they want to find their information, so you want to definitely keep those things in mind. So let's look at some example questions and uh, things you would maybe want to cover with your team. Big one is what content should be indexed? 
Uh, consider all nodes that have a full display. That's a pretty obvious one, but sometimes uh, you might want to avoid indexing content that's not going to be useful within a search parameter. Uh, or maybe you want to index entities like media or files. Uh, Solar has the ability to do these things. We're not going to cover that kind of thing in, the, in our walkthrough, but I uh, encourage you to go and take a look at it because you can build some very powerful searches for media-related things or files. Uh, you want to talk about multiple indexes. Consider those because if you have a lot of content, a lot of different content types, you might want to break those things apart. That way you can have better performance when you're indexing your content. Uh, you can set your cron jobs to index specific indexes related to certain content types, that sort of thing. You also want to identify what content needs priority over others. It's a very important thing to your users to find the stuff that's probably most relevant. And then you also want to take a look, uh, do you need to filter your results? So in most cases, this is probably true. But uh, you know, some, some cases, you might not have the need or you might not have the structure there to provide faceted searches or anything like that. So, but it, it's just definitely a question to ask. And then you want to uh, consider different ways of uh, displaying your search results. Most cases, it's a, it's a common look and feel. Uh, they should be pretty consistent. There's probably some rare cases you might need to display something different. Uh, events come to mind. So normal content, general content, you just see maybe a snippet of information. But an event, you might want to include the event date, which might be a separate field. So you might want to consider how those things might look. So let's look at some. Uh, Solutions that are available within Drupal, uh, just to quick cover a few, uh, obviously our topic today is solar, or I should say search API and solar, but we're going to take a look at a few things here. So the first one's core search. I'm sure everybody knows this is a quick way to get something at least up and running. It's quickly just enable the module and you're off and running. The, the big thing here is, is just limited in capabilities and this low performance. So if you have a lot of content, uh, you definitely do not want to go this route. You can take advantage of Google and use their search implementation. Uh, and you do gain a lot of performance by doing this. But you're also at their mercy for their indexing. And if your content's updating on a regular basis, if they're not crawling your site, you're not going to see those results. So then we come into Search API with the option of using a database, which is certainly a, uh, a, a good option. You, you get all the advantages of, of using Search API's configuration. It's highly customizable. You get better control of your search function and behavior. You got great community support. And if you have, the, the, the caveat here though is if you have a lot of traffic and a lot of search use, it's going to have an impact on your site's performance. So you probably want to avoid this option. And that's where Search Solar comes into play. It's our main topic today. And you gain actually some extras by using Solar. Some, some, some additional features that are available within Solar that are brought through a lot of good community modules that will give you these things. Uh, we're not going to touch on all those details, but I definitely I encourage you to go and check it out because there's a lot of good stuff out there. You will get better performance when you have a lot of traffic. Uh, the one thing here, though, is it requires more setup, and then obviously there's more resources because you would have an external source for hosting your Solar application. And one more we want to mention uh, is Elasticsearch which is a newer technology, again, very high performance. A lot of people are enjoying using this now. Uh, can work with Search API. And uh, the, the one thing here is it's, it's, it's newer technology, so it's not quite as well supported within Drupal, but it's gaining ground fast. Uh, and then you can take advantage of some Elasticsearch uh, tools like uh, for analytics, monitoring, and reporting, and that sort of stuff. They got a lot of good stuff built in. So here's a quick comparison chart of of, uh, of the options. And you'll notice that we, we, we threw medium kind of level, just a quick look at what you can do. And we, we put, uh, from a support perspective on, on, uh, on solar, we said medium just because you do have that extra little thing. So if you're not familiar with setting up those servers or how to do that stuff, you gotta do a little bit more looking around and figure out those things. So, but it's definitely, I think it hits the sweet spot for making a, a quick improvement to your Drupal site. Uh, so why search API and Solar? It's performant. Solar is an application that handles indexes very well. That's what its purpose is. It can run multiple indexes, these. 
And additional, uh, it does require additional resources as we talked about, so you need, to, you need to have that solar instance hosted somewhere. It's highly configurable. There's an extensive list of community modules out there. Uh, it works well with views and facets, and we'll cover some of those things in our walkthrough. Uh, it's built into major Drupal hosting providers. That's, a, that's definitely a huge advantage. And it's battle tested. Uh, Search API has been around since about 2010. There's over 100,000 installs, and 30,000 of those installs are using Solar backend. So you know it's a good, reliable tool to use. So right, let's talk about what you're going to need in order to build your site or build your search with Drupal Search, or I should say Search API and Solar. So first thing you're going to need to do, you're going to need uh, to have some kind of instance to, to host the solar application. Some common things here uh, is popular, obviously, is using a, a Drupal-specific host like Pantheon, Platform SH, Acquia. They have some great options there. There's also uh, other hosted solar options available. So take a look at those things if you feel you need to branch out a little bit. Uh, a few options there, web solar, open solar, uh, search stacks. Just to name a few, I know there's many others out there. Of course, there's always the option of rolling your own self-hosted option. If you've got the ability to maintain that sort of thing, uh, it's definitely not a bad way to go because then you have full control of everything. So for this uh, walkthrough that we're going to go through, here's the things that you're going to need uh, as from a modules perspective is, of course, Search API, which is the core search feature. And then you need the Search API Solar Search module, and we will have links to these two, by the way, at, on our resources at the end. Uh, you will need the Facets module. That will give you some advanced filtering. And then the Core Views module. So it's just a, uh, <clears throat> just using Core View, it's a real simple setup, so not, don't need any additional modules related to views to do what we're going to do today. All right, so before jumping into the walkthrough, let's talk about uh, some important things and uh, things you should probably expect. We're assuming that you already have your solar instance set up. We're not going to go through the process of setting up a solar server. So we're going to uh, walk through the setup of the server and index and the steps in order to connect Drupal to your solar server. And we'll show you how to set up a search index. We're going to talk about a strategy for indexing paragraphs. Uh, a lot of people use paragraphs here yet? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, so there is a strategy to, to, to take advantage of this and make sure that you do get your, your content indexed within paragraphs. And we'll, we'll touch on a way to get around this. Uh, we'll also talk about fine tuning your search results. So using processors, how to prior, prioritize content, that sort of thing. And then uh, creating the search view, which is going to be the display for your users, provide the uh, exposed filter for searching. And last but not least, uh, we will show the basic setup of a facet, and we're more than happy to talk about some advanced features there at the end if you have any questions as well. So here's some important things to know. Uh, search, API so, uh, search API servers with this term uh, is, is not to be confused with an actual server itself. It's actually a configuration entity within Drupal. These entities are set up to manage the connection to the back end where, that, where your data is stored. And, and these actually could be a database as we previously covered. It could be solar. It could be a LASA search. So you're basically just setting up that configuration. So when we use the term search API servers, there's actually, that's how it's defined in the admin configuration. Uh, search API indexes. These are also configuration entities that define uh, which Content is made available to search, how the content is processed, when it's processed, so you can have it processed immediately run on a, or run on a uh, cron task. Uh, when you set up an index, uh, <clears throat> the, the entity types, you'll, you're defining what entity types and bu uh, bundles are indexed. You're also defining the fields within those bundles that get indexed. Pre and post processing content, and these are things like access checks, word stemming, keyword highlighting, that sort of thing. There's lots of options available. One more thing to, uh, to make of note is facets, and, and what are facets? It's basically just a complex structure of filtering 
that can describe all different aspects of an object. So it's basically just a, a super powerful filter. So, you know, a long time ago, you'd use view search and you'd use exposed filters. That way, well, facets actually give you a lot more power. The, the, the great thing is they have the ability to keep context to the current search results. They have the ability to exclude objects that do not meet certain criteria, and that includes the facet itself or even the, the options within the facet. And facets are very flexible. So you, you got all kinds of different uh, widgets available right out of the gate, and, and you have the power to customize those things. So you got check boxes, Boolean selections, uh, even dependencies. And then you get the advantage of filtering with speed with solar, especially when you ha uh, need that performance on high traffic websites and you have a lot of searches happening. And then the, the last piece here is just uh, with views, we are just using the internal views module with nothing extra. The view is based off of the index that we will create. And it's using, we're, we're actually going to be using fields within there, uh, within the views display. Uh, oftentimes nowadays is using view modes and just relying on the view mode of the node to display the information. But we're going to use fields so that we can take advantage of things like keyword highlighting. I'm going to turn it over to Jeff and he's going to go through our walkthrough today. All right. Um, so this walkthrough is going to be, we just, we're doing this with screenshots. Um, hopefully it's going to speed things along. Um, but as Adam mentioned, uh, we do have a little local demo site spun up that if we need to dig in a little bit deeper and look at some configuration in the questions after, we can get that going. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Um, so this walkthrough, uh, it assumes you already have experience installing modules, creating content types, and using a views module. Um, and I already, yeah, we'll look at the demo site afterwards. Um, but first, uh, let's talk about setting up the Search API server. As previously mentioned, uh, this is where we configure our connection to the Solar backend. Um, so you would go to uh, the main Search API configuration page, which is under the configuration menu, uh, Search API, um, and click Add Server. It'll bring you to the next page, uh, where you give your index a name. Um, and be sure to pick the Solar backend um, if you have multiple backend options, like you also have database uh, backend module installed, you'll, you'll have the choice of choosing either. Um, just make sure you're uh, selecting solar here in this case. Um, that's right there. Um, and then these are the primary connection settings. Uh, if you're not sure of the values to enter here, check uh, your host documentation. Um, also, some hosts like Acquia have specialized connectors uh, available through additional modules uh, that can help with this uh, setup. Um, Choose whether the connection requires authentication or not. Uh, choose your HTTP protocol, your host, the port uh, you need to connect on to your uh, solar backend, uh, the path to the solar core within solar itself, again on the, the solar server, and then the name of the core that you need to connect to. Um, here's some things here. These are defaults. You can usually just leave these as is. Uh, you can set like timeouts. Um, if you need to expand timeouts, you've probably got other problems that you need to address like uh, networking issues or uh, other performance problems. Um, and sometimes you may need to specify, oops, sometimes you may need to specify uh, a, a, the solar version itself as an override, but usually uh, the determine automatically setting works just fine. And then at the very end, uh, defaults here um, work as well. Um, we're not going to get into them, but um, uh, encourage you, if you're curious, to uh, dig into that a little more. OK, so if you got your uh, server set up properly, this is what the, if you click the View tab, uh, this is what a successful connection will look like. You don't see any error messages. Um, you may see a message that you need to upload uh, the correct solar schema files to your server. Um, if that's the case, uh, those files are found within the Search API Solar backend module itself. Uh, it's in a cell, it's in the solar-conf directory. Um, there's like three different versions. Make sure you choose the correct version for the uh, version of solar that you're running. And uh, if you don't know where, how to get those files uh, up to your host, uh, check your documentation um, or use their support to find out where those files need to go. 
Okay, next we'll uh, go up setting up, setting up an index for the search. So the index is what, uh, where all the magic happens and connects uh, it and runs within our uh, solar server. So um, this is where we'll select the types of content we want to search, uh, choose the fields that we're gonna search, and configure how we process inputs and outputs. So back on the main search API configuration page, uh, click add index. And then uh, on the resulting page, um, give your index a name. Oops. So yeah, there's just a name field there. Um, then a little bit further down the page, we have our data sources. Uh, for our example, we're just going to index content, aka nodes. And then a little further down, uh, we have some uh, more logic uh, for including and excluding specific bundles. We're just gonna use all of the uh, bundles that are available on our uh, demo site. And um, yeah, you can also configure multi-language settings here also. And then further down still, uh, you can choose uh, index order. Uh, we're doing first in, first out. Uh, you can select the, uh, make sure you select the search server we created in the previous step. Um, and make sure that the index is enabled. And then on our demo site, we have it set to index items immediately. Um, this can have an impact on performance, so you may not want to do this on uh, production. However, do keep in mind that you've, if you uh, do choose to run your uh, indexing during cron, there may be a delay uh, for uh, freshly updated content before that's reflected in the index and the results your users see. Okay, next we'll talk about the fields. Uh, this is where we add fields that, uh, from the content types that get indexed. Um, there's a fields tab uh, in the index settings and um, we can add individual fields here. Uh, note that each field needs to have a type selected. Uh, they're over there in the type column. Um, any fields you want to be indexed or searchable should be set to use the full text type. Um, you can also choose string for plain text fields, but um, full text would work fine for those as well. Uh, on indexable fields, you can also uh, choose a boost value. Uh, this is used to increase relevance for particular fields, so you can use this to uh, tune the search results and um, you know, skew them towards what's important within your content. Other fields can be added um, that don't get in, that aren't part of like the, the actual search results that get returned, but you can use them as variables within the search view. And this is where you'll also add fields that you need to use as facets. Um, and for these, the type should generally match uh, the type of data that's stored in the database. And yeah, there's more information on data types. Uh, there's a field set in the bottom. There's many data types. I haven't used them all. I don't actually know what they all do, um, but there's lots of options there and I uh, encourage you to experiment. Okay, add a new field. So uh, we're back here at the top. There's a add fields button. Just click that. It'll bring up a modal dialog. Um, here you'll select the field you want to add. So like in this case, body, just Click that and click done. Uh, also on this uh, more complex fields, you'll see like some of these have a little plus mark next to them. Those are more complex fields. You may need to actually drill down in certain cases to get to the uh, data you, that you actually want to index. Um, and speaking of that, this is kind of where we get to paragraphs. Uh, paragraphs are complex field types. Um, for those unfamiliar with paragraphs, it's a module that allows you to create structured content um, and compound fields. Adding paragraphs to fields, uh, paragraph fields to search API, it can be kind of a, a, a pain using that interface we were just looking at because you do, there's, you, you kind of go down this like endless rabbit hole of, uh, of dependencies um, and basically your configuration page can start looking something like this. Um, but there's a little trick um, and we'll look at an easier way to do that. So what we do um, is go to your Manage Display tab for the content type that contains your paragraphs field. Um, there's already a search index view mode available uh, through installing Search API. Uh, enable that and include your uh, paragraphs field there. Um, and uh, 
you can control how it gets rendered. Uh, you want it to render as rendered entity, which I believe is the only option. And you can also add other fields that you want to index along with the paragraphs field in this case. And then go back to your search API index configuration uh, for the fields and add a field again like we did before. Only this time you want to choose rendered HTML output. And then that will, uh, the next modal that pops up, you can choose uh, the user role that you want to index the content as. In most cases, this would probably be anonymous users because those are the uh, people that are gonna be viewing uh, your search index. Um, and then also, um, for each of your content types that you're indexing, uh, you can choose a view mode, and this is where you wanna choose search index. That's the one we just set up on the article content type. Um, so this is a, just kind of a workaround. So this, f this fully rendered content will get indexed. Um, there are some drawbacks to this. If you're doing, you, you, so you can conceivably do all of your uh, indexing this way, add all of your fields this way. You do lose some ability to boost individual fields um, because it's all kind of munged together within that. Um, but that's another thing you could consider. But it, also another way around that, you could, again, add those fields individually in addition to the rendered uh, content within the index. So uh, once our fields are set up, we'll want to manage how they're processed for the index. We do this with search API processors. So you go, uh, the last tab there is the processors page. Um, there's lots of options, um, and we'll talk about some of these in a second. But first, let's talk about the different kinds of processing. Uh, there's pre-process index. Um, this stage occurs before content is sent off to Solar to be indexed and stored. Uh, the next stage would be pre-process query. Um, this happens when search request is sent to the server. Uh, processors, processors in this stage, uh, they can manipulate keywords uh, um, that are sent to Solar. Uh, generally, the ones used during pre-process query are the same ones used during pre-process index. This, in this kind of ensures that the Input equals the output ensures better matching. And lastly, uh, post-process query. In this phase, we can alter the response returned by Solar. So typically, you'll only see a highlight here um, because that's kind of post-processing that happens that uh, highlights the keywords that the user is searching for in the search result itself. So now let's look at some of the common uh, filters and the ones we have set up on the demo site. Um, first is highlight. That's the one that adds the keyword highlighting to return to the return search results. Um, it also allows you to define uh, the length of the excerpt that's returned, uh, whether you're even creating an excerpt, and allows you to uh, exclude fields from that excerpt as well. HTML filter is another common one. Um, it strips tags from the index content, which uh, is a good idea. Um, it also allows you to boost relevance on specific tags that get stripped out. But that, uh, and that allows you to further tune your uh, search results along with the ones that, the boost settings that were set up for the individual fields. Ignore case, uh, this can improve uh, matching too. Uh, it does exactly what it sounds like. It basically lower cases uh, all of your search terms uh, that get indexed and also the uh, terms that get sent uh, from your uh, search request. Uh, this is Stemmer. Um, Stemmer uses an algorithm to reduce words to their root. Uh, for example, the words like nerdy or nerdish uh, would get reduced to just nerd. Uh, this increases the likelihood of finding a match. Stop words. Uh, stop words removes common words that don't provide meaning to the content. Um, words like if, and, but, a, is, um, this will help performance as well because it reduces the overall size of your index. And lastly, tokenizer. So tokenization uh, breaks up content into individual words. It's a must have for search to work at all. Um, your search back backend, including Solar, may pr also provide tokenizing, but you'll generally get best results by enabling this processor anyway. Um, there's others available. Uh, you should experiment with various processors to get a better understanding of how they affect your search. Um, also pay special attention to the order that the processors run in within the various stages of processing because that can affect how uh, accurate your uh, results are. 
Okay, so finally we have our index set up. Um, this is the index uh, status page. Um, here you can see that everything's uh, ready to go. Um, this is also where you can go uh, monitor the status of your index and re-index your content manually if needed. So now we've got, we've got our search API uh, server set up, we've got our index set up. Now we need to create the view um, that our end users are gonna use. And so this is all just views. We go create a new view. Um, under view settings, choose uh, your search index that you created as the base for the view. Under the page settings, we'll just create a page. You could also do a block and include it some other way. Um, but yeah, we'll include a page that uh, displays an unordered list of fields. Save and edit, oh, there's our thing. Save and edit, and then um, check out the demo site for details on, um, wait a second. Okay, yeah, the demo site will have more uh, details on this. Um, okay, so for our demo site, we also wanted to have an excerpt uh, returned, even if a highlighted excerpt wasn't returned, so what I mean by that is there may be cases, I probably uncommon, but um, if let's say you had a keyword that a user was searching for um, and it only appeared in the title uh, but did not appear in the body content, probably unlikely, but could happen, um, you might get the title returned, but if there's no search excerpt that gets returned with that keyword in it, uh, it would just be blank and that might look a little weird to your users. So we'll set up a couple fields uh, that provide an excerpt that doesn't have the highlighted word, just a typical teaser type uh, limited string of the content. Um, we'll set those up here. Um, again, look at the, you can, log, you can download the demo site and, and see what we're doing here, but um, we add those fields and we exclude them from the view display and then we'll add them in the search excerpt page uh, in here in a second. So next, um, add the search excerpt field. And in the settings for that field, um, you want to check uh, use highlighted field data. And then if you look down here under our no results behavior, uh, this is where we're rendering the defaults that we set up uh, in the excluded fields above. So if the search doesn't return an excerpt, it will return our little snippets that we're generating from the content itself. And then finally, um, we'll add our search form. Uh, this is just an exposed filter. Um, and within the settings for that, uh, you would want to uh, make sure the filter is exposed and that it's required. And set the operator to contains any of these words. And then a little bit further down, um, for parse mode, uh, we've selected multiple words. The last thing we want to do is set our search relevance. Um, so this is a, a field that gets calculated when the uh, search is indexed, and this is based on all of our uh, boost settings that we set up for the fields and also for the uh, HTML filter. And it will uh, get uh, uh, higher ranked, uh, sorting descending will get the higher ranked content at the top for your users. Okay, now we'll talk about uh, adding a facet for our search. So there's a facet configuration page. Go there, click Add Facet. Uh, on the Add Facet page itself, you'll select the source. So this is the view. The source will be the view that we created. Um, next, we'll add the field that you want to use as a filter. In this case, we're using channel, which is a taxonomy term. If you don't see the field you want, uh, make sure it's been added to the index and that your index is up to date. Um, otherwise, it won't show up here. And you would update your index by going back to that uh, uh, index status page and deleting the index and rerunning it. And then lastly, give your facet a name and save. Uh, the next screen that comes up will be the settings for it. Uh, select the widget you would like to use. Uh, here you have options for checkboxes, drop downs, links, uh, you can do sliders. Um, sliders are a little finicky. Uh, we tried getting one going for the demo, but I uh, had a little trouble, so. Um, but that's an option. Um, purportedly, you can get them working. Um, let's see. Uh, so yeah, select the widget you would like to use. And um, also, you can choose if you want to show the number of results 
that would be returned by clicking the facet that just shows up in a little parenthesis next to the facet itself. We'll see that um, when we see the final result. Um, so facets have a ton of settings options. We're gonna go again in the interest of time, gloss over these. Um, uh, we'll cover a few worth noting, but also encourage you to experiment here um, and see what you can do. Uh, dependent facet is kind of a important one. Um, you can make your facet dependent on the presence of or values in other facets. Uh, this is useful for drilling down through nested data. Uh, for example, filtering by location where you might want to refine by state and then a city within that state. Uh, transform IDs is typically good for things like taxonomy terms where you want to make sure that the facet name label that gets rendered is the name of the taxonomy term instead of the taxonomy term ID. A little bit further down, um, give your facet a simple alias. This will appear in your uh, URL query string, so make it friendly and short. Um, and then also probably want to hide your facet if it's empty uh, because otherwise it's just there and it doesn't do anything. Uh, we'll, you can set up your sorting um, and then you can also, uh, and then, yeah, you can set up the sort order for your facets and then save. So there's our facet. Uh, it's been added. Um, now we need to uh, place it on our site. And we just do this, uh, you can do this through the, block all, the Drupal block system layout. Um, if you're using something like panels, you could also add it that way. Um, but simply place the facet block in the desired region. And facets are contextually aware, um, so they will only show on the page where the search view is rendered, so you don't have to worry about uh, getting all fiddly with the, the visibility settings for the block. And that's it. This is, our, this is what our search results page will look like. Um, notice that we're searching on the word kitchens. And then we have snippets that are showing up in our results with the word kitchens highlighted. That's our uh, highlighted excerpt. And we have our facets over there on the left. And then um, here's a facet that's clicked. Uh, we can see our uh, results are reduced to just articles. And um, that filter by channel is a dependent facet that only shows up if article is selected because channel in our case is only relevant to the article content type. And that's it for me. Hand it back to Adam. All right, real quick, just wanted to touch on uh, monitoring your search. So this is a pretty important piece. So when you first start out and you build your search, you, you kind of have a, a general idea of what you want to throw out there for your users to use. You want to keep probably track of how they're using their search, maybe even gather some information, get some user input in some fashion. So a uh, few, few ways to kind of do this initially is, uh, is to, to take advantage of Google Analytics. It's probably your best option at this point. Uh, so it's gonna be reliable. You can uh, actually go into Google Analytics itself. They have a, an option in there called uh, to define a query parameter. So you just go in there and set that up based off of your search queries. Uh, you, there's also the Google, Google Analytics module. You can download and, and install in Drupal. There's a, a mechanism in there called track internal search. And that should also assist with keeping track of how your search is being used. There is a community module called Search API Stats. Uh, at this current time, it only provides your top search phrases, which can be handy from an admin perspective if you, just, you have an admin screen and you want to see on regular use what's your top searches. So that's, that's something you would maybe want to check out. And there is actually a few other modules that are in early development. So maybe keep an eye on those things, but uh, it just, uh, it's an important thing to note, just keep track of how your uh, search is being used by your users. That way you can improve it over time using a lot of these you know, uh, options and stuff that we kind of glossed over as Jeff mentioned. There's a lot inside of uh, Search API's configuration. So lots to take advantage of there and obviously you might come around some custom solutions that you might need to have built as well. So, uh, here, at, just to kind of wrap things up, we got a, at the end of our slides, we got some resources available. Uh, one important thing to note is the first resource here that we mentioned is, is actually a install of the walkthrough that we just went through. And we chose not to actually do the live demo because we wanted to make sure we could see everything go through. So go ahead and uh, go out and check that demo out, run through the install process. It'll actually give you all the content and everything that we have in our live demo. 
Uh, feel free to play around with it, mess around. If you guys have questions, please ask. Uh, you can reach out, out to us and, and, and we'll be happy to help if you have, a, have any questions there. As well as uh, we link to the, the uh, contrib modules that we've used uh, for this, for this uh, presentation. And then we got some documentation there as well. And we also have a few more resources uh, just from some of the other uh, uh, points that we made throughout the presentation. And then we also have a couple things there for Elasticsearch because we feel like that one's an important one to mention because of uh, how powerful it is and it's a, it is a great tool. So keep your eye on that one. Big thank you to the maintainers uh, for providing this kind of functionality. This is, there's a lot of work put into this. So I just wanted to give a little shout out there. And uh, just a reminder to uh, go and check out the contribution, contribution sprints this Friday. And uh, we'd like to know what you think. So please uh, go out and check out this uh, session on the Drupal.org uh, Nashville website. And then uh, take the survey and let us know. So any questions, feel free to come up to the mic and, and fire away. We'd be glad to help. And otherwise, uh, if, if anybody wants to take a look at the demo site that we have set up, we can bring that up at this time. Go ahead. All right. Well, thank you for a wonderful presentation. I'm curious if you can share some thoughts on um, managing access control, especially custom ones in the search. And okay. the other question would be a bit different. Uh, perhaps is how would you configure something for a regex like searching for media? Oh boy. Wow. <laughs> well, maybe that's, that's all. Those are some deep ones. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't have a good, good quick answer on that one right away, but I mean, it's the, I can see where you're coming from because it's, those are some, some tricky things to deal with. Um, maybe I think what might work, work best if you, if, you, if you maybe have explicit example of what your scenario is and you want to shoot it over. And we can uh, connect afterwards and, and help you maybe get that figured out. Perfect. Probably for more complex things like that too, you could write your own custom uh, processor for the search index. That's probably the way to go about that. Um, so, so this would be in core or this would be search API plugin? This would be search API. Um, you can create a custom processor for that that, ha that has the logic you need to exclude the results that you want to exclude based on whatever access control um, parameters you, you need. All right, perfect, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the talk, Barry, good stuff. Yep. Um, I ran into a bug, I don't know if you've run into this, with the uh, highlighting, and it works fine with words, you know, just you type in words like in your example there, mm -hmm. but when you use um, quotation marks, you know, for a phrase, it, wouldn't, it would return the results correctly, but not highlighted. Have you run into this problem? I have not. not explicitly, um, no. I wonder if the quote maybe, uh, interferes with how it is returned, or maybe I gotta work out some way of escaping that? Yeah, I'm not sure. We are, I think we're also using um, Display Suite, so I'm not sure if that okay. is messing with it. I know you guys used uh, just straight views. Just used yeah. view. Maybe that, yeah. maybe the next step to try to see if that goes around the problem. Yeah, but and if not. I was not, curious if you had that. Yeah, if not, just uh, I definitely check out, see if there's an issue on the module page itself and create one. If not, if you think it's related to Search API. Okay. Thank you. A good start, though. I'd definitely try it on views and see if you get the same thing or not. Yeah. Thanks. Great information. Uh, my question is: Is setting up a, a solar search with panels going to be something like using paragraphs? So you would want to search the panel pages themselves? Because it's not in the way I tried it before. It wouldn't index the panel pages because they weren't actual notes. Okay. Um. Hmm, haven't done that either. Um, you would probably, if you can't get what you need from like rendering from the, the rendered content on the content types itself, if you have like multiple content types within the panel, um, you might need to find some way of rendering the panel content and then including that as a rendered entity. I don't know if there's a module that can help with that, but that might also be some custom work you could do. Okay, that's what it sounds like. I actually, he might have. I've done that before. Okay. There is still is. Mm -hmm. yep. You can use that and then um, bring in everything that you need and then set it. Uh, there, there's probably a function to set it to the index or to send, send a document off to the index in, in 8 or in this module. Does that, does that exist? 
Um, yeah, that yeah. does. Yep. So then you would, send, you would send it off as its own like, document with uh, all the stuff that it's like the path and everything that it would need. So it's not indexing a node, it's indexing whatever you told it to. Like, That's great. Thank you. Yeah, very yeah. cool. Great. Great walk through, thank you. I, th I think this gentleman just answered our question as well. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. Well, he didn't answer mine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just curious, when it comes to um, dev staging and prod, would you advocate having three separate hosts, solar hosts and an index on each, or put the three indexes on one host, or would that vary by scale, or any thoughts on that? You definitely want to consider the scale for sure, but yeah, I'd separate them out in some fashion, and and if you probably keep your production completely separate, so you could you know if you have like dev uh, dev staging environment test environment two separate ones there, uh, those could probably be on the same instance, and then just keeping separate servers and and indexes that way. But I would keep a total separate one for your production stuff. Yeah, that for sure. Also, I think I, if I recall, like working on Acquia in the past with this, it seemed like their dev test live environments use the same index. If I'm not, yeah, the uh, the dev one is read only. Yeah, yeah. so you want to. Yeah. There is a setting. The stage and dev on Acquia, those indexes are read only. Only production is read write. So they're reading the same index. They're reading the production index, but they can't write to it. No, oh, yeah. Good point. And so that's a setting on uh, the index setup itself. You can set up for each of your environments and the configuration, um, whether you want it to be read-only, you just need to make sure that that configuration gets enabled for the proper environment. Um, and then you could use the same index in that case. I'd love to know a little bit more about how it works with uh, paragraphs, uh, specifically um, like in the search results, it, will, will that show up as well as the page that it's, uh, that it's a part of? So you're asking if you could have the, the paragraphs a part of the, basically the, the summary that's in the result, um, that detail? Well, if, if, you, if you add it to um, this whole search system, like will it would show up as its own result in addition to the page that it's on? Or I guess I'm confused. No, it, it should be, it's, it's the page result. So it's basically, it's not, it's not a separate thing. You wouldn't, it wouldn't be a separate, like the paragraph itself. So actually there's, when, you, when you're setting up the indexes, there's actually an option to select paragraphs in there. Don't select it because that would give you that scenario, I believe is what you're talking about. So what you want to do is that you focus on the node itself and the display of that, the, the rendered output of that node, which should contain all your paragraph content, right? So that's what you're, if, if, does that answer your question? Uh, yes, I think okay. so. Okay. <laughs> there might be a use for, Indexing the paragraphs themselves. I don't know what that would be offhand, yeah. but um, maybe for an admin tool or something. Yeah. I could see it that way. But hey, thanks a lot for the presentation. Uh, a couple questions. Um, do you have a recommendation for a tool to set up autocomplete? Uh, yes, actually, there is a module for Search API that will allow for search uh, for autocomplete. Okay. Yep. Cool. I don't yep. know. Is it Drupal eight mm -hmm. ready? Yep. Okay. Cool. Ready to go. Okay. It is. Um, and then sort of a setup question. Do you, you had mentioned this a little bit. Do you typically do a different index for every content type or when do you choose to make multiple indexes versus yeah. just one huge one? You kind of want to gauge that. So um, you can have one index. Keep in mind the size of your site, maybe traffic that's coming, all those kind of things, but probably set up different indexes, especially if you have, Let's say you have uh, like 10 content types and one content type in particular is like a bulk of your content. Separate that one. You could maybe get away with having the others all contained together if you only have a few nodes per, per item there. So you wanna consider the amount of nodes per content type that we would, you would have in those instances and then, and, and then look at separating those out. And then over time, you think about if you notice performance issues or anything like that, that's, then you can set up, you know, separate them out if you needed to. It doesn't hurt sometimes to just separate them anyway. Yeah, yeah that's I've, if you have the availability. Yeah. yeah, that's what I've been doing, and then I'm wondering if I'm being insane having yeah, six I, indexes. But. Yeah, there's probably a, a certain point where that does become insanity. Yeah. Um, I you know, search it, solar's pretty performant; it can handle a lot. Um, I would maybe start out uh, just you know uh, indexing the content types you need for a specific. Uh, search view itself. So if you just have like your main site search, just I would start out 
unless you have a lot of content and a lot of traffic, uh, just index everything under one index. And then if you begin to see uh, performance issues, you might think about splitting it out at that point. All right, all right, thanks a lot. No problem. Hi, I've got a, uh, I think it's a solar configuration question, and it has to do with the, uh, the suggestions that when you do a search, okay. sometimes you get that suggestion in terms of, it always seems like the, the phrase that they return say, do you mean mm -hmm. such mm -hmm. and such? And uh, it always seems something ridiculous. Uh, it doesn't seem to match up with any of our content on our site. So is, is there a way that you can kind of, can you configure that to point towards your search index? Because right now our, our solution is just to, to turn it off because it just seems okay. uh, like um, kind of, it seems rather comedic. <laughs> Huh. Yeah, so I know uh, there is a configuration for solar itself that allows that to happen um, at the index level. I don't know for Drupal 8 if there's a means of getting that returned in any useful way that you could use uh, in your results. Or, so how are you doing it currently? Is it, are you using that or do you, are you using a specific module for the? Um, when I've done some research and it's been uh -huh. a while, it seemed like we, have, we had to work directly with, with solar itself mm -hmm. versus there wasn't any kind of interface in Drupal mm -hmm. for that. But at least in terms of what I tried, didn't right. seem to, to help at all. Yeah, um, yeah, and that might be a case, like I don't even know if like some of the, like if you can get that information from some of the major hosts, that might be a solution where you need to self-host and, and really be able to like get into the back end of your solar server itself. Um, Seems like this may be an issue due to a stemmer. Uh, so I'm curious if the solar search engine itself has a choice of you know selecting a stemmer or choosing a different one or disabling it altogether? Yeah, you can enable. There are uh, there is configuration within Solar for stemming as well. Um, so yeah, again, like a, having a custom server, you might be able to uh, get in there and, and and tune it more than you can just using the processors that are available through the Drupal Search API module. Okay, thank you. Hi, I was wondering about you know fuzzy fuzzy search. Um, does uh, the search uh, API have anything for, you know, when somebody misspells something, you know, give uh, related uh, results? Um, yeah, I, I personally, I haven't messed around with something like that. You, to me, um, it might be a custom solution there you're looking at. Because, or uh, you know, with, with Elasticsearch, uh, yep. I know there's a fuzzy search. Mm -hmm. There is, yeah. I was yeah. wondering about solar. Yeah, I, I don't know, actually, to be honest. I don't know. I don't know either. All right, thank you. Yep. All right. I was wondering, uh, with the view that returns results, can you mix two indexes at the same time? Is there a way to do that? Or do you have to search each index independently? I think you can only do one index. One per, yeah. Per. Okay, thanks. Yep. Um, on, our, on our site, uh, search is probably the most used and often the most hated function on our site. Um, and there's, uh, my question is, are there any developer tools when somebody says, I saw, searched for this and I got this, or I searched for this and I didn't get this, and trying to understand the relevant score and, and what, is there anything that we can go and lay, why is this showing up or why is this not showing up? Yeah, I don't, I, that's probably, I don't know, something probably more on the solar side, wouldn't it be, like from the, yeah, I don't know like what kind of logging it, it keeps. Um, if that's a problem, I, you might, if it's not a big deal, it probably is, but uh, look at Elasticsearch because there is a lot of tools that, uh, oh. for like looking at uh, uh, monitoring and um, statistics and you can do like data visualizations and things like that. You might be able to get more insight into how users are using your search and the results are getting back. I don't know that Solar has that level of yeah, it's reporting. often a mystery as to you know, yeah. why, why things are showing up, why they're not showing up. Are they not being indexed for some configuration reason, or mm -hmm. is it that they put um, frump instead of trump? Yeah. yeah. Um, is, it, is, is it a user error, or is it a database error? That's what I'm trying to get to. And yeah. sure. there's just no tools to look at the solar index to say what's in there. I wonder if there's a, maybe a way you could use Google Analytics to see at what point, like, uh, users are leaving your search page or leaving your site when they're getting frustrated and see what terms they used. I don't know, but that might be an option. At least help you point in the right direction, maybe. Uh, great talk. I'm curious if you've ever run into a problem where the excerpts that come through are all lowercase and stemmed, and it looks like the processors might have like ran on the excerpts. 
Hmm. I don't know if it's because my processors are like out of order or. Yeah, I would check that first. Yep. Okay. You, and you think the order could definitely dictate that? Because I was just curious why they would run up the excerpts in the first place. Yeah, that sounds weird. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I, I, I've never ran into a, that kind of an issue, I guess, to be able to um, pin it down what that would be exactly. It seems like somehow your uh, your stemmed words are getting. Wow. Yeah, I don't know. Actually, <laughs> sorry. Okay, I think um, a couple questions ago might have answered this, but so our situation is we're indexing an external source, an external website. It's not our domain, and so it's in a separate index. And we've been trying to figure out if we could possibly combine that in some way with the index from our domain. Okay. Um, we're, use, we're using Nutch for the external external index. Um, there's probably a way to accomplish that. Uh, I don't without like getting in the middle of it and, and seeing a way to get those things to be combined. Um, but similar to um, when you, def at least in this way we set it up, we target a single index to display the results of that index. And I think, isn't there, I'm pretty sure there's a way to, on, on solar side, to, to combine those indexes together yeah. and then return it into one index. And, but I don't know for sure from an outside source if that's a big yeah. ability or not. Yeah, I need a creative view. This that would combine okay. them, right? Is that the I don't think so, no. Okay. no. Yeah, because view wants, Views wants to target a specific index. Right. Yep. Okay. Multiple sources are hard. Um, I think something we've done in the past in a situation like that is actually create a, a solar index and use a web service on the external server, on the external content to get that content in and index it and index it along with a link that goes out to that external uh, content. So basically, you have an additional solar index that indexes that site content. Does that make sense? Sort of. I, that's more of the back end. <laughs> yeah. I can deal with the views. But okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So with views itself, there's not a way to to do do more than one. Hey. Um, so we're running a solar five something, um, and every now and then we get duplicates, and I don't know why. Um, have you ever come across that, and what did you do to troubleshoot it? Uh, so you, duplicate results in, in like, the index. So if I so we have a, uh, we have a self-hosted solar, so I can go in there and like uh, uh, run a query in the in the in the URL and get a JSON back, and uh, and I'll see that it has the same NIDs, but different hashes that you know so the the internal for solar, but it's the same one for that particular knit. Hmm. And I don't know why there's multiple ones. Sometimes there's three, but most of the time it's just two. Um, hmm. And then we just clear the, we just yeah. uh, delete it and re-index it, and then it goes away until it comes back again. And then it rebuilds itself up. But it, yeah, and it's, there's no pattern. I don't, I don't really know if, it's not like a specific content, uh, you know, no type or anything like that. Um, it just have you uh, maybe tried uh, to manually redo your index and see if that's when it happens? So you have your index maybe when you clear it out and you set it, mm -hmm. uh, then just try to redo it again and see if all those duplicates show up. What that would maybe mean is that it's not no, uh, they, replacing. No, they, they don't show up when I, when, so it, it, ha it must be happening on cron because like whenever it's running on its own, if I re-index it myself the, like one time, it's like, Good. Okay. So maybe it's happening on like a resave. Somebody's editing a node and hits saves, and, and then maybe it's, it's not. It's keeping the revision or something, maybe like I, that. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's possible. It's not. A, it, it's not, definitely not a revision. It's, the, it's oh. identical. Um, like I can look hmm. through all of it and like do a diff, and there's no difference at all. There's no changes. The, all the timestamps are the same, except for the ones for solar itself, like the last indexed and whatever. Hmm. Um, yeah, yeah it's really weird. That is an odd problem. I don't, I don't have a good answer for you. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Yep. I'm wondering about uh, minimum word length indexing, where that setting is, and does it work? Um, yeah, it works. And uh, let's see. Uh, I think it's in the index. Where 
is that? It sounds familiar. Yeah, it's in here somewhere. It must um, be on the server side. Server configuration. <coughs> Why does it sound familiar? Yeah. You can set it. Uh, gosh, I'm trying to remember where it is. Okay, while you're looking, uh, second question. Is there a module that helps solar become a learning search system so that if the third result of a query is constantly clicked, it moves up? Move. Because I don't understand why solar is so popular. It doesn't learn, there's no fuzzy logic, uh, and really the biggest way we've been able to boost results is using an XML file the Elevate XML file. On its own, it seems like kind of a basic, uh, unimpressive Indexer. search. Yeah. Um, I don't know personally of, of any, anything explicitly to address that, but I, I'd imagine there's got to be some way to do so, probably on the solar side. I don't yeah. think you're going to get that on the Drupal side. Okay. And I haven't dealt, myself, I haven't done any deep diving on the solar side configuration to, to uh, address things like that. So I suspect it showed up when you were configuring the index, and now it's all baked in, and so you mm -hmm. can create a new index. Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> to get, <laughs> to get the, the word limit? The word limit, yeah. I, see, I know I remember because seeing it, It has too. to do a re-index anyway, so it doesn't show up here. Yeah, there is a setting for minimum word length. For the life of me, I can't remember where it is now. Um, I've come across it a million times. Um, but it does work, in my experience. Um, Maybe it's before. Oh, it might be a processor. Oh, that's maybe what it is. It might be a tokenizer. Here it is. Yeah, there it's it in the is. tokenizer. And so what were you saying earlier about the, those being ordered properly? Does that change if they're not in the right order? It can change your results. And a lot of the filters will have, um, especially if you look at the help here, like Stemmer, it'll tell you that um, you wanted to make sure it runs after uh, a tokenizer in this case because you don't yeah, want to. You've got them set to whatever it says in the. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's some other setting that, you know, order that we're not thinking um, of. Yeah, I think with the basic ones, if you just, uh, it should work uh, as advertised uh, if you follow those directions. But yeah, certainly play around with the order because it does affect how things get indexed and it does affect the results that get returned. First of all, I'm going to say I'm, I'm still on Drupal 7, um, but my question is maybe you can answer it. Um, we're currently using um, the Apache Solar module uh -huh. um, with, uh, with Solar on Acquia, and I'm wondering if we need to cr um, create a new, um, the, the index that we have now that would be compatible if we recreated it in, or the, the um, setup in Search API. I would definitely recommend doing that it, to get a, a lot more uh, performance and uh, capabilities out of it. Um, I recently actually had to do that for a client. It was replace everything with Apache Solar on the Drupal 7 site and replaced it with a search API and solar modules. It got much better performance and a lot more options to, to, to do, deal with the uh, annoying issues that were there before. So, What version of Drupal are you running? Uh, seven. seven. Seven, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, it's definitely an option. I, again, I, if you're not having any problems with your search, uh, it maybe take a, if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of approach. <laughs> it's um, a little broken. It's yeah. a little broken, then yeah, I would I recommend. I would consider replacing it. Just, it, it, it can't hurt, right? And you might find that you're getting better results and that sort of thing too, yeah. And it's, and it's really, it's very similar setup well, kind of with what we just did here with Drupal 7, so it's, it's not too painful to get it moved over. Thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, thanks for the presentation. Yeah. And, um, so uh, we already configured the search uh, to show the index index results for the nodes. So we already um, and we also have few taxon term pages that has to be indexed. Mm -hmm. And um, can we uh, can we show both of the results in the same 
such mm -hmm. field. You should be able to. Yeah. Yep. So when you set up your, um, let's see. No. Uh, so they're just we, adding more. We are getting the I think it's for, a, so, I mean, index uh, index results for the nodes, like, right? So we also have the axon return pages. So can we show both of them in the same? So way? when you when you set up your uh, index itself, when you choose your data sources, you can choose content and uh, taxonomy terms, both. Right. Okay. And so, then you'll have access, to, and then just. Uh, but the taxonomy term doesn't have the except, right? The search except. The search except uh, won't do for taxon terms, right? Um, I mean, I kind of. It, you, could, you could add that as a field. You could add that as a field, and you could add a. Well, you could add a. Let's see. It seems like this. It doesn't have an option for search excerpt. I mean, it does have. Uh, it does for notes, like not for tax. That's so. There's actually there's a couple different ways. Like if you look here, like we're not even using. Um, in the server setting, let's see. I think it's here. That's actually a good question. I don't know. It seems like that should be. Can we do that in the view? Like, so can we show that in the view? Like, both of the results. Like, it's so the same for the nodes and the taxonomy terms. So let's if it's see. using this, that same. Maybe also using the taxonomy term based. I mean, the data changes. Uh, um, Using that TID, no. Let's see. So. Let's go to our index. Oh, we're not doing it. We're not indexing taxonomy term, though. Um, gosh, it seems like you should be able to. I tried that. Um, no, I mean, I, I just see the title. That's it. Like, and also, like, if if there is any node and uh, if there is a node related, like, if there are category related nodes, then. Uh, uh, we can only show the taxonomy, um, which is related to the, the specific node, you know, that, like below that, below the title, that kind of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. I couldn't show this separately. Is it kind of like multi-site indexes, that kind of thing? No. You might be, so if you're not getting that, that result, you might want to look at some way of doing some, you, do you, you, you must have like a, a, a some kind of, it's a full page display, right, for your taxonomy terms, is right. that right? right. So you've right. got to have some kind of content there where what you might want to do is look at pre-processing the output of that, grabbing the content that you want to be, and then combining it with that title field, and, and then targeting uh, maybe the, the search or something like that within the pre-processor to, to display that together. That might be one way to handle it. So it'd be, it'd be some custom work to get there. We're on D7, but we use view modes. Yeah, I'm using the mm -hmm. too. Like, we use yeah. view modes to... Yep spit out our search results. Yep. Mm -hmm. And like we have one we have one content type where the title mm -hmm. is not set to the actual title. It's okay. like set to a code for this particular it's a course. So it's yeah, set to yeah. the course code right. and then there's a separate field that's just like course title. Yeah. So in the view mode as the results come back we look to say is this a course? And if it's a course we display yeah. this other field rather than the title. So you can so if it's a con if it's a taxonomy term you can do it in the view mode. You know, put something else in there other than instead of doing it in the view. Okay. Yep. Right. You could say like instead right. of instead of like showing the excerpt like you do on a node, you show some a description field yeah. for a taxonomy. Yeah. Right? So you can do some PHP work in the in, in the view mode itself. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank you for the uh, presentation. I was only able to capture or see uh, last half. So I'm sorry if you covered this already, but boost by age. Um, if you guys could talk a little bit about that and how would you manage, uh, you know, the penalty that you can apply to documents that are older and maybe setting a, something along the lines of a, minute, uh, a minimum uh, penalty that you can apply for documents and have, the, have that level off after a certain number of years, months, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's a configuration that's built in to deal with that explicitly. That sounds like you might have to. Come Again, up with yeah, a custom a solution. Custom to processor. You could probably yep. write a custom processor that you could um, look at the publish date or something like that, and then have it not uh, available to the index or, or decrease the the boost on it okay. because of that. I don't think there's a way to do do it through configuration. That sounds like uh, custom work to me. Okay. Uh, second question. 
Um, omit norms, is that uh, something that you could talk about too in terms of uh, configuration and how you can apply that to some of your content? Uh, so, I don't know if I, I'm not familiar with that. Yeah. So my understanding is that uh, you can essentially uh,